Greetings, friends and family, both uh, in the United States and around the world, in South America, Canada, Asia, Africa, Europe. Uh, today's uh, study is taken from the, uh, the lectionary text for the Gospel for Tuesday, which is the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. And it relates to parables of our Lord. And these parables center on the worth that God places in each one of us. And, and uh, it follows the parable Sunday, which was the lectionary text of the prodigal son. But I think it's important that we understand these first two parables before we pick up the parable of the pro prodigal son in, in uh, verse 11 of this same chapter. And uh, so it sheds light greater light on the meaning of the parable of the prodigal son. The first uh, verse said, Then drew none to him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Jesus draws all kinds. But one group wants to hear the message of salvation. They have been put down all of their lives as sinners and publicans. And they are thirsty for the word. On the other hand, the scribes and Pharisees, in verse 2, and the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. They came for a different reason. They came to find some means by which they could destroy Jesus and accuse him of heresy. Of course, they never succeeded in any of this, but nevertheless, the wicked are very persistent, often much more persistent than the true Christian. So they're seeking some way to destroy Christ, and so they put down other people. They look down on others. It's hate, love. There's a very thin line between hate and love. When we have hate in our hearts, it spews out and radiates before us, and it casts dispersions on everyone that is not like us. On the other hand, love is an inward quality that is imparted by the Lord. Jesus said that we love him because he first loved us. And that's very true. Uh, so this first parable is about a lost lamb. The second one is about a lost coin. What I want you to think about as we look at these parables is to consider how they are alike and how they are different. And also the level of awareness of that which is lost. Okay, looking at the first parable. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness? and go after that which is lost, until he find it. Here we see the sheep have an owner. Their sheep have a shepherd who loves them. He's only got a hundred sheep. That's not a lot in the Middle East. When I was flying in Iran, sometimes we would come around a mountain pass and there would be thousands of sheep. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't know they were there and they would stampede. But this man had 100 sheep, and he treasured those sheep. Let me tell you something, too. The good shepherd in this world doesn't have that many sheep either. The world is wicked, and too many people follow the dictates of the world and not of God. He knows these sheep by name, and they know his voice. And one of them gets lost. And he leaves 99 of his sheep in a safe place in the wilderness, probably the sheepfold. And he goes seeking that which was lost. Now, the lamb has a very low level of awareness, but it does have awareness. And so it's following along, and it sees a little grass off to the side, and it goes over and starts nibbling on the grass, and then it looks a little further on. It's very sh short-sighted anyway. And it sees another clump of grass, and it goes over and nibbles at that. And then it looks up. And all of the company is gone, including the shepherd. And the lamb panics. It runs to and fro, bleeding. It's very careless in its 
in its desperation. It runs into briar sometimes and gets caught in the thicket, or it falls into a pit or a crevice in the mountains. And it bleats and it bleats. And that's, you know, when we belong to the shepherd and we get lost, which we will do from time to time, what do we do? We pray. We pray for him to find us. And he will. He searches until he finds us. That uh, verse 4 says, and he goes after that which is lost until he finds it. It doesn't say if he finds it, until he finds it. He's not going to give up until he finds the lost sheep. Then he says, and when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders. Rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice for me, with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I've seen many times shepherds in Iran and other parts of the Middle East carrying a lamb on their shoulders. There's several reasons for it. The lamb may be too weak to keep up, too young. It may be injured a little. It may be hungry or famished. And so it is unable to keep up. So the shepherd carries it on his shoulders. And this shepherd, this is the good shepherd who finds the lost sheep. He puts the lamb on his shoulders and carries it. Then he goes home and he calls all of his friends together and says, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. There is rejoicing in heaven at the repentance of a sinner. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over the sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Now this was aimed directly to the Pharisees because they thought they were just, but they were wicked beyond measure. They knew who Christ was, but they wanted to destroy him because he was a threat to their establishment. In those days, that was the deep state. And so they attempted uh, to destroy Jesus, and they looked down on everyone who was not uh, sophisticated and uh, prided themselves on keeping all of the commandments, which they did not do. They did not even keep the first commandment. Okay, that's the first parable, and it is about a lamb, a lamb which has very little awareness, but it does have some awareness. Later, when we get into the parable of the prodigal son, we'll see that he was a child of the father. He was of the very blood of his father. He had been from the time he was a baby and before, and now he is a man, and he rebels against his father. But you know what? When you rebel, that doesn't mean that you do not still belong to the father. He still belonged to the father, the prodigal son. We will talk about that in more detail later. It's just like the lamb. The lamb belonged to the shepherd. It had value. It became the most valuable lamb that he had when it got lost. The 99 were very important. But when one gets lost, it becomes very important. It's like us. If we lose our keys or we lose some little thing that is not so significant, it still bothers us and we search and tear the house up until we find it. That's leading into the next parable, which is the parable of the ten coins. What woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she find it? This coin apparently was lost during the night because she had to light a candle. But I want to tell you something about the coins. The ten coins, silver coins, were perhaps part of her dowry. A dowry was insurance against uh, the time, the hard times that might come if she, uh, if she were divorced by her husband, which didn't require much other than throwing your shoe down and pronouncing that you divorce your wife. And then she would be on her own. So everything, these 10 coins were important to her. But she lost one 
and she forgets about the nine and diligently searches, searches for that one. That one coin becomes the most valuable. Why? Because it's lost. Now, look at the level of awareness in this product, in this uh, parable, as compared to the level of awareness in the lamb. The lamb has some awareness, but a lost coin has no awareness. A lost coin is like a sinner that does not know God. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that we are dead in trespasses and sin until our hearts are quickened by the Holy Spirit. In other words, when the Holy Spirit speaks life into our hearts, then we live. Then we come to God. Then we can know God. But until that point in time, we're like that lost coin. We cannot bleat. We cannot pray out because God will not hear us if we regard iniquity in our hearts. So this lost coin cannot find itself. It cannot bleat. It cannot pray. So the woman lights a candle. Like the Holy Spirit, the light of God, the light of his word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. She lights a candle because it's the Holy Spirit that searches us out. And she sweeps the house. She cleans everything up, looking for that coin. She tears up her house looking for the coin. And we do the same thing when we've lost something that is of any importance whatsoever to us. And when she has found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. She becomes filled with joy, more so than ever before she lost the coin. But now she's found that one coin, and she's rejoicing over that one coin, not the nine. The nine are in safekeeping, but it's the lost coin that gains value because it was lost. These are very important concepts as we read through this. When you read the Word of God, you read it like a love letter. You read between the lines, not to find... Uh, not, not to find something there that is not there, but to find something that is there that you didn't notice before. So that's the story of this lost coin. What does she do when she finds it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. And then Jesus adds again, Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. If we are lost, we need to pray. We need to seek God. There's, there's only one kind of prayer that a sinner can offer that God will hear. And that is a prayer of repentance. And I get go back to the uh, to the reference in uh, the Psalms. If we regard iniquity, which a sinner has in his heart, in our hearts, God will not hear us. So let's think about these two parables and their meaning, the deeper meaning of these parables as relates to that of the prodigal son. And later we will talk about that because last Sunday, the lectionary text was uh, Gospel of St. Luke 15, 11 through 31, which is the prodigal son. We will discuss that at a later date. But I want you to understand these parables and get into them and read them and study in detail. And it opens your eyes to other things that you had no clue about. We look at the word and we read it in the sense of modern times, and we think, oh, that, uh, that was okay. That was, that was 2,000 years ago. It doesn't have any relationship to us. Every word of God is written directly to you. It doesn't matter when it was written. And we read these words, and they go into our hearts, and they bear fruit. It's like seed dropping into the soil. You put a seed in the ground and it's in the darkness of the soil. You don't know what's happening, but the seed is germinating over time. It sprouts uh, and begins to 
struggle to get to the sun because it wants light and we want light also. We don't have light in ourselves, but we do have that light of Christ who is our son of righteousness and we are the reflected light of him, just as the moon is the reflected light of the sun. So in studying the Bible, study diligently. Don't read over it lightly and forget about it. Make it part of your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.